Hi, I'm Ben Canning, and this is my collection is on communication basics. As always, you need three or more bullet points worth of notes, a one to two sentence summary, and your follow-up questions on Google Forms. Okay, so we're going to start off with a little bit of review. Um, think to yourself, and you might pause this video, what is the difference between amplitude and displacement? So for this wave, is displacement changing, and is amplitude changing? So take a second to think about it, and then I'll answer them. All right, so in this case, we have a wave in which the displacement is constantly changing. We can see that by the fact that the y-axis is displacement, and the displacement goes up, and then down, and then up, and then down, and so we can see that with time, it changes. Um, displacement is kind of the vibration or the oscillation of the wave, so that's the kind of movement up and down. However, amplitude is the maximum displacement, so it's displacement is the distance from here to here, or from here to here, um, where it's the distance from the wave, wherever it is, to equilibrium. But amplitude is the maximum displacement. So we can see that the amplitude in this case is five, or you could say negative five. Um, so that means that the amplitude is not in fact changing. Um, so it's staying the same because the maximum is staying the same throughout all of these. It's gonna be important as we move forward and talk about um, some communication aspects. Okay, so let's also think about, given the idea of superposition, what happens when these two waves are overlapped? Go ahead and pause, think about it for a second. Okay, so we're going to call this an S wave and this the C wave, and if you overlap them, so meaning they both arrive in the same spot at the same time, their amplitudes, uh, or sorry, displacements, just add on to each other. Now, if that means there's parts where they cancel each other out a little bit, then it cancels each other out, but here it looks like all of the crests match up with crests, all the troughs match up with troughs, and so it will just result in a bigger wave. So they combine. Now, if instead we took that bigger wave and we just took the opposite of our previous C wave, so we had this C wave and now we've got a negative version of it, or it's just the opposite, then what happens is we can get back to our original S wave. So here we've got this idea that we can add a wave in and then we can also remove a wave out uh, in terms of superposition. That'll be important for later on with communication. So for now, let's call the S wave the signal wave, and let's call the C wave the carrier wave. Now, sound is a wave. We've talked about that before. But normally, we're recording sound in an electronic form, such as with a microphone or other things. And so the waveform will look something like this. Here we have a waveform for a goal sound, which I'll play for you in one second. So we can see how as the goal kind of calls, we can actually see the spikes in the sound wave or in the electronic waveform of it. Um, and then there's that weird sound at the end. Um, similarly, we have a sound wave or sorry, the waveform for a uh, voice speaking. I'll play that. This is a recording. So we can see how each syllable kind of results in a temporary spike up and then it trails off in that sense. Okay, so even though sound is a wave and normally we can't see that, what we do represent in terms of maybe you've seen this on for your MP3s or other things is this electronic version of it, meaning there's something on the y-axis usually graphing pressure or um, loudness or decibels or things along those lines, uh, and then on the y-axis, or sorry, the x-axis is usually time. So... If we zoom in a ton, this waveform would look something like this. So we can start to see that it looks very much like a sine wave or something close to a sine wave. So now let's get to the idea of how do we send messages? Well, normally if we're talking about, let's say, a radio station, what they're gonna be doing is they're going to record somebody's voice or capture it somehow, so electronically. So they take normal voice, normal sound, and they turn it into an electronic form of that. Now this is still analog because it still represents that sound wave um, and mimics it exactly. So in this case, we turn it into um, a electronic waveform then they're going to use that signal and they'll combine it with their own carrier wave. Now their carrier wave is like the station you're tuning into, like 94.9 or 105.3 or 88.5 or whatever station you're tuning into. They're combining this waveform with that waveform. 
and then they send it out or they broadcast it. Now, to do this, they're combining um, the electronic waveform, like I said, uh, like this, with the set radio frequency. Um, that is the carrier wave, as I mentioned before. Sorry, I got a little ahead of myself on the slides. Now, on the receiving end, the radio is going to separate the signal from the carrier wave. Much like how we subtracted that C wave back out, your radio just does that. It tunes into the um, carrier frequency, so whatever frequency you set it at, and then it subtracts that frequency out of whatever the signal is that's coming through, and then plays it back through a speaker. So that's the basics of how communication works. If it's not playing it back through a speaker, it's showing it as text on a screen, um, or various other ways of representing it. But go ahead and pause, think through what exactly is um, that process, and see if you can uh, see if you can recite it on your own. So go ahead and pause, see if you can recite the process on your own, and then I'll go through it. Okay, welcome back. And so the process is step one, we capture the sound wave and we turn it into an electronic signal. Step two is we are going to combine that electronic signal wave with the carrier wave, and then we're going to send that carrier wave out, broadcast it via radio tower or your cell phone antenna or any sort of antenna. Then on the other side, the receiving end will separate that carrier wave from the signal or from the combined wave to get what the original signal was. So this blue line representing the original voice or signal um, is now coming back out, and then that's what's played. That's it for the basics of communication. Three or more bullet points worth of notes, a one to two sentence summary, and do your follow-up questions on Google Forms.